Hello again, I'm Dr. Reina Reyes of the National Institute of Physics. And in this lecture, uh, we've been discussing the question, is there life elsewhere in the universe? Uh, we've gone over the Drake equation and the different factors uh, that uh, make it up. And uh, in this final part of the lecture, we will bring all of this together and uh, look at some implications for the future of our own civilization. So as we said, we actually have a good idea of the first three factors. And that's um, the N star, the number of stars is around 10 to the 22. And we also know the fraction of these stars that form planets and that's uh, almost a factor of one. And then the third one is the average number of planets that live in the habitable zone of the stars and that's around 0.2. We can take all of these numbers together, we get still a very, very large number essentially, you know. Um, and the last three factors, what we're calling the biotechnical factors, are actually unknown. All of them are unknown, so we can lock them all together into one uh, factor, F sub BT for biotechnical. And what this tells us is that it really boils down to this factor. If this F um, sub BT is um, a very, very small number, then you can actually end up with um, one scenario. And if this F is um, uh, not a very small number, that is, um, uh, it's not um, very, very hard or very, very rare to make a life, intelligent life and technology, and, that, uh, and technology, then you get uh, another scenario. So these two scenarios is that one, uh, in the first one is essentially we are a miracle. Uh, it's so hard to form, um, to make all these milestones happen. And so this, no, this factor is very, very small. And we're just lucky enough to be the one uh, where it all came together. A equals one. And that's just us. We are alone. On the other hand, there's also the scenario where we are not so special. Uh, these um, factor, these probabilities are actually um, not that small. And in that scenario, you actually get uh, A much, much greater than one. So that means that uh, the, the universe is actually the galaxy, the universe, um, even our own uh, galactic neighborhood could be um, filled with life and um, with civilizations uh, just like ours. So Arthur C. Clarke put it this way, two possibilities, two possibilities exist. Either we are alone in the universe or we are not. Uh, and both are equally terrifying. For me, this is actually an invitation to, um, to be comfortable with answers, with with having uh, questions with no definite answers and considering the different possibilities uh, at the same time. When we look at the second scenario, uh, which um, is actually very plausible, um, so we end up with a, with a, with a picture where um, you actually have a lot of civilizations and a lot of time for them to evolve and to develop um, technology that could be uh, much, much more advanced than ours. So there's this concept called the type three civilization. Uh, and nicely discussed um, uh, and illustrated by uh, in this blog, uh, in the Wait But Why blog. Uh, so I recommend that. Uh, and this is how, um, how it was illustrated. You have all these different uh, civilizations or species um, all racing to be uh, to become a type 3 civilization and that is essentially uh, one with technology that can uh, colonize a galaxy and we can actually um, visit these different planets um, and the question is why have we not been visited by such a civilization and one of the uh, possibilities is this 
concept of the great filter. So the great filter is something, some kind of um, milestone that needs to be um, achieved or passed uh, to get to a type three kind of civilization. And that um, filters out most of the civilizations uh, that um, don't, um, don't um, uh, pass this barrier. And so you can uh, have initially many, many planets where there's life. So one example of a great uh, filter is that is the evolution of intelligent life, as we discussed. Uh, you can have life, but not intelligent life. Uh, and if that's the great filter, we're saying that that probability F sub I is very, very low. And so only a small, small, small fraction of all these planets with life actually pass the great filter um, and form intelligent life that will then go on to form technology and can eventually uh, form a type three civilization. Now, in terms of the great filter, it could be behind us. Uh, there are two options. The first is it could be behind us. Um, so in our example, uh, if it's uh, the development of intelligent life, it's already behind us. So we've managed to uh, cross this barrier and we're on our way um, to becoming a type 3 civilization if we pass the other barriers. But the other option is, um, the other option is that the great filter is still ahead of us. And in this scenario, you actually have um, so many um, uh, so many species, so many planets with life, with intelligent life, let's say, uh, essentially um, achieving the same um, level of um, evolution and civilization that we have. Um, but somewhere in, uh, in somewhere along the way, and still in our future, and there's actually some barrier, some um, some milestone that's very, very hard to achieve. Uh, and in this illustration, that's essentially uh, us, is the orange curve, uh, one among the many, many uh, green curves. And this great filter could be uh, simply just uh, ahead of us. Um, and uh, we have a very, very small chance of, of passing it. So this idea was, uh, um, was uh, put forward by Robin Hanson, it's 1996. Um, paper and um, it brings us back to um, to a reflection of our own civilization um, and if it's uh, if it's something that's still ahead of us uh, these are what could be possible uh, what 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 we would call civilizational risks or um, or events and um, issues that can affect the, the future of the whole civilization um, based on our history, we know, uh, and our technology, we know that we've created um, enough um, bombs and uh, destructive uh, weapons of mass, de mass destruction that, um, that can um, destroy, uh, destroy, um, destroy our civilization uh, and our technology and bring us back to, um, to, to, um, to very um, um, primitive um, ways of life, um, and um, that's a, a potential uh, future, apocalyptic future. We also have, uh, we know, environmental dangers like climate change uh, that's already um, happening and will become worse over time if we don't act on it, uh, and that again. Uh, that would have sweeping, um, sweeping, um, sweeping damage across uh, across the globe. We know that resources are limited, and we've been um, using up more than what we can um, rebuild. Uh, so we're not being sustainable. And most recently, we've had the global pandemic, which no one was expecting. But as we see, can really uh, affect um, economy, uh, the economy and the health of um, people around the world. And it, we're yet, it's yet to we're yet to see how what long-term effects this would have to our uh, planet and our civilization. 
there are astrophysical dangers as well. Um, asteroid impacts are just by chance can hit the planet and change the climate and, and made which uh, what we believe made the dinosaurs extinct. Uh, and then there are these um, futuristic kinds of tech, uh, technological dangers from perhaps technology that has not been um, produced yet. By and large, these are very real, very serious um, issues uh, that face our civilization. From here, you are invited to, um, to see the implications of, 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 um, of these, even not just for life on Earth, but potentially uh, life in the galaxy and even life in the whole universe. I hope that you enjoyed this lecture, that it has provo provoked thought uh, and interest. And uh, of course, you're invited to uh, dig deeper and look at these uh, ideas and these questions that people have been asking since time immemorial and form your own opinions and form your own thoughts around this question. Um, I look forward to your responses.